Hi, this is a course on superconductivity and applications and <clears throat> I will I am Satyajit Banerjee from the Department of Physics at IIT Kanpur and I am going to be talking to you about different aspects of superconductivity and its applications and it's a vast subject so we will be covering concepts individually as we go along and these concepts will be divided into videos so there will be a collection of videos of maybe 15 20 minutes each which will deal with one concept and then we will move on to another concept so rather than lecture wise i will be dividing it into sets of videos okay and these videos will be in a sequence so let's begin with the topic of superconductivity it's a vast topic and we will cover a whole range of concepts and which will cover topics from thermodynamics, electromagnetism, condensed matter physics, quantization and second quantization and quantum mechanics and so you will have a very broad spectrum of applications which will go into understanding this phenomena of superconductivity and we will be looking at also applications of it in different devices and so on. So let's begin off with the topic of superconductivity and the topic of superconductivity basically um, uh, if you want books relating to the topic of superconductivity these are some books that I would like to recommend. So Introduction to Superconductivity by A.C. Rosenheins. This is a very good uh, book, uh, very simply written and gives a very broad overview of the topics that we are going to discuss but it is it, it doesn't go into the depth of the topics uh, a more formal and uh, one of the formal books of superconductivity which i'll use for this course uh, which is easily available is introduction to superconductivity by michael tinkamp uh, then there are a few classic books like magnetic flux structures and superconductors by hubner uh, theory of superconductivity by schrieffer Physics of Superconductivity and Applications by Fossenheim and Sudbo and Superconductivity and Superfluidity by Thilly and Thilly. So these books I will be using topics from it and of course there are many other sources which I will be following not any specific source that I will be looking at and so there will be a wide distribution of uh, topics which I will be choosing from. So what is superconductivity? let's begin off uh, and before I go along these if you see these view graphs um, this is actually an image of something called as vortices in superconductors which have been imaged on the surface of superconductor so this is something I will get at and if you see these images this is a very famous experiment each of these vortices have a particular height but if you look at one vortex here this is half the height of the other vortices. So this is a very important experiment which told us something about the nature of superconductivity in particular class of materials called high TC superconductors. And uh, vortices are nothing else but swirling whirlpools of current. This is like a whirlpool in water. So you can see similar sort of thing of vortices uh, which happens in superconductors. So we will, this is just to give you a brief flavor of what is going on. So we will get to some of these topics as we go along. So now what is superconductivity? Superconductivity and why was it studied at all? Okay, so the superconductivity is a phenomena where, wherein the resistance of the material abruptly goes below measurable limits below a certain tra temperature called the superconducting transition temperature and this is the phenomena of superconductivity it was first discovered in 1911 by a person called kamerling -Ons, and of course it led to a nobel prize in physics for this phenomena of discovery of superconductivity and since its discovery it has sort of the topic has exploded, it has grown and it has really flourished. Now before we try and understand the phenomenon of superconductivity, it's important to know 
what are the questions which led to this discovery and prior to superconductivity there were metals and people were trying to make purer and purer forms of metal and the question they were wanting to ask and it they knew that okay electrons are the charge carriers inside a metal which is carrying a current and they knew that this electrons undergoes collision with atoms and it gives rise to resistance so the questions which one was going to ask was that people wanted wanted to ask was that if you take resistance or you measure the resistance of a metal as a function of temperature then what happens to the resistance does it monotonically decrease and go to zero this is one possibility that if you keep on reducing the temperature of the metal the uh, resistance will monotonically go to zero however there were some people who proposed that no this will not happen as you keep on reducing the temperature at some point the motion of the electrons will cease and of course at that point of time quantum mechanics and so on was not so prevalent so what they thought was that uh, the electrons would freeze and they would no longer move and if they no longer moved then what would happen is that the resistance instead of decreasing will actually go up so lord kelvin proposed that if you reduce the temperature of the metal then below a certain point actually the resistance instead of going monotonically to zero will actually rise up so and then there was a proposal by matheson that they said that no it will neither do either of them it will neither go up nor it will go monotonically to zero but actually it will saturate it will flatten out so this was the three proposals which existed nobody knew what actually happened because at that point of time people were not going low enough in temperature this was in the late 1800s or so okay and so there was a major impetus to try and cool materials okay go to lower and lower temperature so there was a there was a major a uh, requirement to actually cool materials and actually go to lower temperatures and achieve lower temperatures and this gave birth to the phenomena of low temperature physics or this gave birth to low temperature physics and superconductivity actually was discovered because of questions like this and because of questions like this which i just described people wanted to search for ways and techniques to go to lower and lower temperatures and because of that the phenomena of superconductivity got discovered in mercury by kamerlingh ons so i would like to describe to you as i said that the phenomena of superconductivity you cannot see it without looking at low temperature physics so i would like to discuss to you with you over the course of next few videos or if you like the next few lectures uh, how to generate low temperatures or what are the ways or what are the principles of generating low temperatures and what are the contemporary ways of generating low temperatures so this is what i will describe